So now I want to talk about a little side topic, which is an, kind of an audio engineering problem, but it's related to all the stuff we just talked about, which is the idea of a quantizer. So another way of thinking about this or talking about it is called A to D conversion, analog to digital conversion. You have some continuous values, you need to convert those into discrete values to put on a CD or encode them into an MP3 player or something like that, right? So the idea is that I have some underlying random variable, which um, let's suppose that it has a um, uniform PMF. So we're gonna suppose that X is a uniform um, PDF over the range like minus um, X max to plus X max, right? This is the dynamic range of my in incoming signal. Okay, so I have minus X max over here and plus X max over here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to represent this by a discrete signal that I'm going to get by chopping this interval up into uh, some number of bins. So here I'm just going to use an example with eight bins. So let's suppose I have an eight bin quantizer. And sometimes you think about this as a binary set of bits, right? To encode each of these bins, I'm going to use, um, you know, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and so on. So my n is like log 2 of 8, which is 3. So you might call this like a 3-bit quantizer, okay? What does the quantizer do? Well, it says anything that's in this range from here to here, you know, is going to get quantized to this middle value, okay? That's like basically the best I could do. And then the next bin over here gets quantized to the middle value and so on. So a quantizer kind of looks like this stair-steppy thing. All right. And what is the what is the error that's happening inside each interval, right? So basically what I'm doing is I'm quantizing to the mean of the interval. So the error inside that interval, if I can find my pen, looks like this basically, right? You know, I'm, I'm right on target in the middle and I have a high error in the middle and a low error at the ends. So what is the expected value of the error, right? So basically if I have this new variable, let's call it z, which is x minus the quantized version of x, this is also going to be a uniformly distributed random variable. So here, before I was going from x max to minus x max, this number here, if I think about it, is going to be basically like, you know, x max um, divided by m times 2, right? So like, for example, this number here is x max over 4 when m equals 8. So that means that um, my error is going to be distributed in this range. And as an audio engineer, maybe the thing I'm interested in is the signal to noise ratio, the SNR. The SNR is defined in this decibel way, 10 log 10, the variance of the signal over the variance of the noise. Now, in a previous lecture, we computed what was the variance of a uniform random variable. That was something that we figured out. It was this 1 12th b minus a squared, right? So in our case, what we have is the numerator is 1 12th the length of the interval overall squared. The bottom is 1 12th the length of this interval squared. Lots of things cancel out. And what I get is um, 10 log 10 of m squared, which if I think about m as uh, 2 to some power, right, this is like saying I have 10 log 10 of 2 to the 2n, right, it's like 2 to the n squared, and this is like 20n log 10 of 2. Log 10 of 2, if you're an engineer, you know is approximately like 0.3, so 20n times this is 6.02n, as it turns out. So 
what have I learned? I've learned that every bit of the quantizer that I add will uh, increase my SNR by 6 dB, right? So this is this kind of rule of thumb that you sometimes hear in engineering, 6 dB per bit. This is where it comes from, right? So this makes sense when I have a uniform uh, PDF for my input signal, but maybe I don't have a uniform PDF. Maybe I have some sort of a weird PDF. Um, so what if um, signal has a non-uniform PDF? What do I do? So suppose I've got a PDF that looks something more Gaussian. If I were to chop this up into the same even intervals on the x-axis, that wouldn't make any sense, right? Because that would be like saying I'd be allocating the same number of bits to this bin as I would be to this bin, even though this bin over here is very, very probable and this one hardly ever happens, right? So kind of what I want to do is I want to spread out the bins in such a way that each of these bins has an equal amount of probability. And that's basically called a compander, okay? And so kind of the idea is that what I want is, this is a bad idea, what I want is something more like this, where I have um, maybe bins that look like this, right? Where in theory, each of these bins is equally probable. Now I know how to compute the probability of bins using the CDF, right? Um, for example, if this really was Gaussian, I could compute Q function boundaries to tell me, okay, if I want to divide this up into eight equal parts, where should I put the boundaries, right? Once I know where the boundaries are, what should the quantized value be inside each bin? Well, it should basically be like the expected value conditioned on being in that bin, right? So um, basically the idea is to put, um, you know, put the um, bin edges to form um, equiprobable bins. And then the quantized value in each bin it makes sense that it should be basically the expected value of x given that x is in a given bin. And so this is something, again, that I could compute uh, once I knew what the bin boundaries were. And so for more about this, this is what's called a Lloyd Max quantizer. And so depending on the PDF, or like I also said the word the compander, right? So depending on the PDF, you know, either you can compute these bin boundaries and expected values explicitly, or the Lloyd Max method is basically like an iterative method that bounces around. You start with equal probable bins and you kind of bounce around between reassigning the bin boundaries and reassigning the quantizer values. And so you can kind of, for any PDF, arrive at the optimal uh, quantizer boundaries in this kind of like back and forth iterative fashion. So that's something that you can read a bit more about if you're interested. This is a little bit off the beaten path of pure probability, but it is a good engineering application.